G'day viewers. Welcome to another super cool, super helpful repair video from the Goat Shed located in Newcastle, New South Wales, Australia. So today is Wednesday, 3rd of April 2024. It's 19 degrees Celsius outside, which is approximately 66.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, as we've entered April, our um, fall is into its second month and the weather will start to cool down from here on in. And we had quite a bit of rain yesterday and more is predicted for the weekend. So, previously did a video on Gottlieb's spinner card, the spin unit and a few things on there. So we went through the machine before and the machine after, so if you want to know all about the machine, watch that video. Well, you should have a look at it anyway, it's very informative. Now, we've got this all back together, we've very rubbered it and done all the normal things. And we're about to start the game up. So let's have a little look and see, and hopefully we should be able to start it up, and then we'll be able to go through anything that we might need to fix. So, here we go, we'll do a reset. And that's all nice and good. Now, let's have a little look at some of the features on this and we'll see how this works. Um, first thing we note that up the top here, the king light is out. Now, That's this light here, but there's another king light here that's on, so that just means it's either the bulb or the socket. So we'll have to have a look at that. So there's the first thing we've discovered. Right, we've got the apron off this game, so I'm just going to run over the trough switch for ball one, and there we are. Now there's Spanky up there in the road. We better get him out of the road or he'll get hurt. We don't want that. So... Spinner card is a game where the idea is that you've got to get all the the number sequences and card sequences out so that you end up lighting if we hit the roll over the ace we've got a we've got a red ace here we can roll over that the ace lights up we do the same with the number four on the other side and that lights up now, the spin unit is actuated in this game by the yellow pop bumper. So, obviously, when we start a game, we've got to roll over something. We've, we've got a 500 point, we've got the king. So, we'll just roll over that king. And we're going to hit a couple of pop bumpers. Scoring one point at the moment. They've got to be a light. Now, the way you get those are light. If we want to light the yellow bumper, if we roll over queen, we get the yellow bumpers alight. If we roll over uh, number three here, which is the green, you get them all alight, and then you'll get the point. Okay, we have the actual spin unit. So, we'll have a look at the back display. Well, the back display. Too used to talking about cash registers. We'll have a look at the back box. We'll pop that in there. And you see it spun round and selected a number for us. Okay, we'll move on to the next ball. We've got a little bit of trouble at kicking the ball out. We'll have to have a little look at that. We are running downhill, though. That's the other thing just here. All right. I've now got every of the, all of those lights at Ace, King, Queen, Jack, 10, Ace, 2, 3, 4, 5. They're all a light. And now I've actually got special here lit up. So if we hit that, we're going to get a replay. Now, the special alternates off the pop bumper. We hit that there. We've now got that special a light. We'll drop it down the guts. And we get another replay. So if you get that specials up early, you're going to get a lot of free games. 
All right, well, that's good. Um, we're now on ball four. Uh, let's advance that to ball five. There, we've just moved over to ball five here. Notice that that black mask was obviously missing. Someone's put cardboard around it. That'll do the job. That's good enough. I'm happy with that. Let's see what happens now. So we, we expect the machine to game over. So let's roll down 500 points. We'll hit the top bumper. We'll turn that off so we haven't got a special down the guts. Let's have a look. And now what we are expecting is, is game over. But it's not game over him. Okay, so we're not getting game over. Now, we need to investigate why we're not getting game over. That's probably fairly important. So let's have a little look and see on the schematic how we can go ahead or about and fix that. Now, apart from that queen, a king up the top, roll over lane. So far, that's about all we've found wrong with it. Well, we've just got to put rubbers on the flippers there. We've got them here somewhere. And this was the game that had the bally flipper buttons in it, which is really bizarre. So we'll have to have a look at that. Now, the play field on this isn't the best. You can see an awful lot of planking and paint degradation here. You look a little further up the play field, you will see... where it kicks out on both sides is damaged. Once again, we're not here to fix that. That's not our job. If a guy wants that done, he can get someone to do that. This was just to get it going. And remember, we had to put that new uh, fibre unit on the spinner, on the spin unit, which was great that we had one. Now, let's just have a little look and see what might be wrong with this game over. Now what I've done, I've drawn up the part of the schematic that we're interested in. Now, a friend of mine taught me this. It's not 100% necessary, but sometimes where you've got circuits crossing over one another, you're really only interested in the part that has the fault. So if we have a look here, we can see that there's A motor switch 2C involved, a switch in the uh, two switches in the O relay, a motor switch 1A, and motor switch 2C. Now, what we could do, this is the red and white side of the wire here, and this is the black common over here. What we could do, we could get our clip and clip it onto the red and white or simply use the bounce switch and jump it from there to there bypassing all those other switches those five switches to see if our coil works all right well I've actually done that and it's all good now what I'm suspecting is that we have a motor switch which is faulty because you hear the motor spins around and nothing happens so that hopefully the O relay we have those switches there are working okay and I think we've got a brown and white and a brown, I can't read my own writing, blue probably, or wouldn't be, and we've got a, a green and black and a slate wire, a slate and black on there. So let's have a little look and see what we can work out is wrong with this game over. Like I said, I suspect a motor switch. Well, we'll have a look in a minute. Just get that back to reality. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to close the out hole switch. With a jumper. 
and then I'm just going to short this switch out here and that's the problem so that switch 2C with the green and black and slate and black I think it is wire is the problem so just looking at that switch physically it's not really making a good it's a little bit bent and it, a little bit wide apart so it's probably just barely touching so let's go ahead we'll fix that up and then we've got a game over functioning so we need to carry on with more testing we need to have a look why that king light isn't on we'll do that next and then we'll take it from there all right so we've fixed up that king lamp here it is here it was a faulty lamp socket so we had to change that not too bad for a, a machine this age just having to replace so far one lamp socket well, I mean we may find others now during the testing we're very confident now with that game over problem we have with the switch that seems to be fixed quite well but we found one other little problem now the center target which we're more or less looking at here when you get specials you'd hit it and it wouldn't work it would do this reasonably consistently now a bit of an odd problem what we figured was that it was paying okay on match and replay on score but it was this particular area or circuit that it wasn't working on very well so what we did we unsolded one wire off one lug we hooked our meter up and we did a resistance check and this switch when it was closed had a very high resistance therefore it would appear to prohibit the current from flowing through the circuit well because what was actually happening the replay unit add plunger wasn't going a full stroke in it was sort of only going part way up so we took that switch out and gave it a really good clean once we did that it seemed to improve greatly but it still had a little intermittent problem so studying the circuit we found out that the three and five ball plug which is just a little bit out of shot it runs off the power bus the red white wire and what we discovered was it was very dirty so we cleaned that as well so together with cleaning that switch and that plug seems to have remedied that problem now one other thing here if you have a look we have a 75 ohm resistor just came into view there now that's 75 ohm 10 watt resistor now i've checked that to make sure it's okay because they get quite old but why they're there, this is running off the 25 volt circuit. So they use a number 44 lamp in the 25 volt circuit using the resistor to bring it current down. And you only replace those lamps with the number 44. So just be aware if you have to change those lamps out, always replace them with 44s. If you put a 47 in, it will glow very brightly, even supernova, and probably blow after a fairly short time. Now, the other thing to be aware of on this game is that we have our ball set to five generally here in Australia on electromechanical games. I know three ball is popular in the USA in some places. So when you get specials on a three ball you only have to get one row of cards out so ace king queen jack ten for argument's sake will light specials but on five ball you have to get both rows out I'll, I'll show you that in a moment the only other thing i wanted to point out in here because we've pretty well got this going to a point where we're 98 percent happy with it we just like to do a bit more testing those of you that watch our videos will recall that in the video we did on the spin unit itself we had a errant wire which is this 
brown black one just here it's going back under we've had to put some little cable ties in there and we had to cut that wire and join it and we've put heat shrink over it and threaded it all back through the loom to tidy it up a bit we have no idea what we didn't bother following up what it does or anything like that also it's probably a bit out of shot but the on and off switch down there doesn't have a black cover on it so we've had to put heat shrink on that as well so let's have a look at the actual gameplay now and see what's happening with it the only other thing we we had to do i can't recall i think we might have mentioned this but on the the flippers where are we you know better get high enough yeah there's the flipper coils there the wires were just sitting in there now someone's gone to the trouble of putting new flipper coils in this at some point in time and so we have re-terminated these wires with that green wire normally they've got that purpley colour one there because they are wires were a bit oxidised and, and soldered them incorrectly I'm not sure why that occurred someone's either done it the flippers would have barely worked and we did, we did, I mentioned, put a flipper kit in as well. So that's all done. Cosmetically, the pop bumper coils look quite shiny. These anodized type thing polishes up really, really well. We've got a bit of rain happening here now, and I've had to sort of, hopefully it's drained drowned out because we're in a tin roof it probably might sound a little bit funny so that's what it is rain we haven't had any decent rain for a while there's Graham getting ready in about an hour's time him and another goat shed E are heading north to a place called Coffs Harbour so Spanky's having a little bath before he goes over we apologise for his nakedness but we'll get him dressed as soon as possible. So yeah, that event is on tomorrow being a Saturday. All right, let's get back to the pinball machine. So this is what I was referring to a minute ago. You've got Ace, King, Queen, Jack and Ten, Red and White. You've got Ace, Two, Three, Four and Five. If this was three ball, you only have to get either of those suites of cards a light and you'll get your special here and down the guts but in fireball you have to get both out so it makes it a bit more challenging because the great thing about the single player wedgehead games is that you have five balls to get specials so if you were to get special on ball two uh, great you know and you could bang the crap out of this target and get quite a lot of replays a lot of these games were great when you got specials you know like particularly when they were on the play field good player would be able to hit that target many times and of course what happens is is that the the pop bumpers alternate between there and down the drain there's not too many machines where you can get a special down the hole I think a lot of the 50s games were like that, but probably not so many 60s games. I mean, I don't know exactly which ones, but anything's a possibility, isn't it? So that's good for the player. Well, we'll start the game up. Got that rain happening again. How that's not too annoying. Okay, let's uh, start a game. Watch the score rules reset. Good positive reset on those score rules. All right, now we're ready to play the game. Now, we have gone through a little bit of this before, so I don't think we need to spend a lot of time on it, but what I want to illustrate now is let's have a little look at the play field. And, of course, here we have here the ace. So if we push that, the white ace lights up here. We have the number four here. 
We have the Red Ace and the Jack over there. Queen, King, two, three. And all we've got to do now, we need the 10 and 5. So we have those on a target. Here's the 5, and there's the 10. Now, specials are a lot at the moment. You can't quite see it, but the special... Let's get it in. There you go, we'll be able to see both lights. That special's a light, so if we drop that ball down the guts, you're going to hear pop. We've got one replay at the moment. Now we've got two and the ball comes out. Now, I guess the idea of having this special here is like Graham was saying earlier on, you might be getting close to a replay on score and you might be 100 points off and it's your last ball and, and as long as you don't hit a pop bump because that will change. See, now that one's a light you could either have gotten the 100 points or the special. Now, we, we, you get the 100 points and the special, but the chances are it could have hit the pop bumper, hit here and gone down, or hit here and gone down, and you get nothing. So it's a game of chance in a lot of ways. You've got to sort of assess, assess where you're up to in the game or with the game or how good you, you are at shooting. It's probably as simple as that. I just noticed we've got this pop bumper here as broken. Um, maybe we'll have to try and get another one of those or a little bit of blue tack might do the trick. The only other thing we, we, we noticed, and someone's done a really good job, you've got to look hard. The right um, slingshot light shield, A9080-R, but the left one doesn't have the a 9080 dash L, or whatever they called it, it's actually been made up. It's a slightly different yellow. It's not quite as a, an intense yellow. I don't know if you can sort of see it. And the girl's hair is just a little bit different, but they've done a really good job. Someone's made that, that up. So that was um, pretty good. The only other thing we did that's probably worth noting is we, we painted the top arch it was a bit grotty, so we've taken it off and painted it. We buff all the chrome up, so all the, the chrome brackets are all been buffed and things like that. Makes it interesting. Here's something we've noticed on this. See the number there? Two, three, four, and there's another number on the other side over here. You won't be able to see it, and it says 48 or, yeah, 48. Now, I don't think that's got anything to do with the serial number. That's the other number just embossed there. Probably had something to do with the operator had a number. I don't know. But you can also see we've, we've uh, done the side rails. We always do. It's a bit of a, you've got to take them off now. It's a little bit of extra work because you've then got to peel the, the guides off the side. Well, not peel them off, but take the nails out as best you can but now we've got a fairly good working spinner card and remember this is the game that had the really badly burnt out um, PCB now I sort of thought this had something to do with the old, old style armature but I wrote to a friend of mine and he maintains that as the wiper finger's going across, it's the voltage from the lamps arcing and causing that. That's really badly burnt, as you can see. So that's apparently the reason they go. And we've got, you know, quite a number of those in stock. And we just recently had another one where the it was just carbon in the grooves. But this one's just almost burnt through. Can't quite see it burnt at the back, but... It would have got there eventually. I think we have seen one burnt right through. So that was something that needed to be done, needed to be repaired. But we showed you all that in the previous video on the spin unit and the spin relay. So if you haven't looked at that video, have a little look at that because 
that's that's really cool the way that works I'm not going to go through it all again um, I'd rather you just look at the video but it was really inventive you know some of the things they did with these electromechanical games was just fabulous I mean really really fabulous I, I don't know today you know you've got a chip electronic components can do almost anything but you know, back in the 60s we didn't have a lot of this stuff we had valves but there's no valves in pinball machines so the engineers and designers had to be quite inventive in their ways of doing things and I, I always find it fabulous some of the things they actually did all right I think we'll finish this video up now this machine is pretty well almost good to go Please remember to consider subscribing to our channel to keep updated with all our latest work. Also to give us the, the big thumbs up on our videos and we welcome any comments positive or negative about our videos. And we only can hope that these videos are helpful to people and we do get so many people writing to us in messages or on our Facebook group, the Goat Shed EM Pinball Repair Specialist on Facebook, telling us that this video helped them, that video helped them. And that gives us a warm and fuzzy feeling to know that we've actually helped somebody. Okay. Thanks so much for watching. And this has been another Goat Shed presentation.